What is up my interwebby type people? Welcome to Shareware where we talk about the latest and greatest in technology, automotive, pop culture, and the world around us. Now today's a little bit different. Uh, I don't have a new product to review or discuss. Uh, we're actually talking about something that I've been developing and creating and building uh, over time with this channel. This is actually the camera that I shoot the Shareware videos on. I'm using my original YouTube camera, the HDR PJ10, to shoot this right now, which might be why the quality is a little bit different. This right here is my Canon T5i setup, and I just figured, you know, those, those budding filmmakers or those passionate YouTube creators that, you know, are struggling to either make a name or not exactly sure what they want to do uh, or what kind of products to do those things with. Uh, I figured I'd just run through my setup right here. We talk about the stuff that I got on here, the stuff that I was anticipating getting, and uh, you know, the, the pros and cons to each thing that I have. So first of all, the brain of the operation, like I said, it is a Canon T5i. Uh, the reason why I didn't go with something different was I'm on a budget, as most of you are. And at the time, through the Canon refurb website, I was able to pick up the camera, the kit lens, a memory card and I think a bag and it was like it was under $400 which is absolutely insane when you think about how much these things cost when they were brand new I mean even like walking into Best Buy today it's not uncommon to see them for you know six seven hundred dollars for that kit so that was a huge plus in the reason why I went with this camera this is kind of like a, an upper entry level DSLR and if you plan on shooting video with a DSLR you don't need something this elaborate to start off or even in general frankly and i mean if you're just if you're just starting out there's absolutely nothing wrong with like a canon t3i or a d5200 i mean they will they'll, they'll get the damn job done guys but i figured this thing is handy and i haven't had a chance to talk about it yet and you guys don't know exactly what i use to shoot my videos so i figured i'd run down a few things so what we have here is the camera seated on 15 millimeter rail rods. What's cool about these rail rods is they actually have a riser base on them so I can adjust the, the height and the depth of the things on the rails, which a lot of the expensive ones have that, but I believe this was about $23 for this rail rod system, which you're not gonna find much better for that price. This is actually, it's all metal, even the little screw-ins are metal, which I was genuinely pleased with upon receiving because I was expecting a big old hunk of plastic. And uh, it's made by the newer company, N-E-E-W-E-R. A lot of this stuff actually is their products and I just, I'm not endorsed by them or anything. I just genuinely like what they do for the price. And so this is the newer 15 millimeter rail rod system. Attached to that, we have the matte box, which in all actuality, this is not a matte box. Matte boxes have cartridges that you can use for putting in filters, for augmenting light. This is actually just a shadow box. They call it a matte. It's just a, it's just a, a sun visor, which I didn't know that upon purchasing it, but I'm not mad at it for the price, which it was $23 also on Amazon, also from newer. You're kind of catching the trend here because we're building on a budget people. But there are situations where this really will come in handy and uh, I'll link a video down below to really explain that side of the camera better. Next up, also from newer, we have the follow focus with the gear ring belt. Uh, this was $39.95 on Amazon. Uh, what this does, it's, it's for pulling focus, which if you don't know what that means, it's kind of an old term. We don't really use that much anymore, at least not on the amateur level because of you know, we now have screens. You don't actually have to measure things. Back in the old days, you would pull focus by measuring the distance from where you want the camera to focus to where the camera is. You make a mark on this area right here on the ring and you would actually mark your shot. So say, you know, something's 10 feet away, first shot, go to number one. Then as the, as the person is moving or the shot is moving, you go to scene two where you can pull the focus get everything all centered and pretty. And you just do that over and over again. There's typically in like a big setup, you actually have someone that all, their whole job is to be a focus puller. They're standing there on the side of the camera, making sure they're hitting their marks while the footage is being taken. Uh, for me personally, when I'm in manual mode, it just makes things a lot easier, uh, especially when I have the matte box on here or the sunshade rather. When I have that on here, things can get in the way. This makes it, it's directly connected to my focus ring 
and it's it's just a cleaner cleaner easier way to do that and i'm i'm all for being clean easy and lazy when it comes to my camera stuff now i'm saying now i'm saying next up and i do mean literally up we have the v bracket assembly that i have running off the top of the camera's hot shoe uh, the hot shoe is actually where things slide in as that little square bracket. Uh, this is a V bracket which you can either utilize as a light holder or a microphone holder or in this case I have a GoPro attached to a secondary hot shoe for additional footage. Uh, but I mean like monitors, lighting, anything that you need to have above the camera that you can augment slightly and is a little bit out of the frame. This thing is awesome. And at $12.99, it's a, it's a substantial hunk of steel. It really is. I thought it was, again, I thought it was gonna be plastic. Definitely not plastic. Fatty hunk of steel, dropped it on my foot, it hurts. Now on top of this V bracket, there is the newer 160 LED lighting panel, which is typically shining at my face and making me all sweaty. Uh, but the cool thing about this thing is that it came with a little booklet of different filters. So even though my matte box doesn't have the cartridges i can still augment lighting they gave me a, a, a warm thinning filter which kind of has a yellowish tinge to it then i have this standard light one i think i also have a cooling filter but that was a that was really cool didn't expect that uh what's also really cool about this thing is that it's dimmable as well as it runs six AA batteries or if you have a sony battery or I believe a, what is it, a Nikon? It might be a Nikon battery. Either a Sony battery, a Nikon battery, or six double A's. You can plug that right into the back of it and it'll work, which is awesome because the HDR PJ10, which I am shooting this on, shares the Sony battery with my lighting right here. Everything is, I like to keep things dual purpose and that definitely is dual purpose. Eventually there will be a monitor right here because the flip monitor, I'm getting real blind real quick and I have trouble seeing this thing and a lot of times I can't tell if I'm in frame or even in focus. So there will be a monitor here eventually and then the light I'll probably put on an additional stand just to, you know, keep things pretty. I like pretty. So last but not least, when discussing this setup, we have the once again newer wide angle 58 millimeter lens, which is on the front right there. Uh, that's what I use to be able to pull my tripod real close in on the white table when I'm discussing new products and to be able to get that full frame look. This right here, I'm probably gonna have to chop the sides off just because it's it's not true full frame. And this just makes my life so much easier. And honestly, the part about this that blew my damn mind was the fact that I bought this lens. Granted, it's not a true lens. You can't attach it directly to the camera. It screws on to a lens that you already previously have, but it was $11.22. And the quality, is not bad at all. This is definitely something that if you're just running a kit lens, just freaking buy this, throw it in your bag, take it with you. Because at that price, you really can't go wrong. Even if you think it sucks, which I will tell you right now, it doesn't, it's 11 bucks. But if you go back to any of my previous videos, that will be the lens that you're seeing me through. Oh, one more thing, which I completely spaced, but it's actually probably the most important thing when it does come into this setup because of all the crap that I have on here and the length of which I screw these videos up. So I'm constantly running out of juice was a AC adapter kit for this, also from newer, also around 12 bucks. Uh, it looks like a fake battery. You plug it right into the battery compartment. Uh, if you've ever noticed on your cameras, there's a little rubber uh, gasket just outside the battery compartment and that's what the cord is meant to run out of. So you run that out, plug it direct to power. I never have to worry about batteries dying ever again. And at $12, if you're shooting inside, totally worth it. And then, like I said, this is definitely not the tripod that I use to shoot. I use a Zyko 75 inch tripod with the leveling and it is plastic, it is cheap. I believe it was like $16 but it definitely gets the job done. It's more than sturdy enough to hold all this crap up. Typically the best angle for shooting someone is directly down. You've, you've noticed that a lot of people, a lot of girls who shoot selfies, take it angled down. That's your most flattering angle. So I wanted a tripod that was slightly taller than me, which I'm 6'2", 6'3", in shoes. And uh, Zykos was able to hook me up with that. So after running through everything that's attached right here, including the camera. Now, like I said, I paid sub 400 for the camera but you could run any camera you want to with this setup as long as it's a dslr or in that vein um, and it was every attachment 
not counting the GoPro, was $171, which is not bad at all. You can have a setup that not only impresses people, but is very, very functional for substantially less than what most people might think. So with my camera, with all the attachments, with my higher quality tripod, I'm still under $600. I'm still under $600. And the other cool thing about getting attachments for DSLR, if you plan on sticking with DSLR, is they can go with you as you upgrade. I won't always be running a T5i. I'm actually already looking into the T6i just because I love the body, how it feels in my hand. And the T6i is now a 24 megapixel still camera, which is awesome because I also do a lot of stills, uh, which uh, photography videos will be coming soon also. But yeah, T5i won't always be my main priority camera and all this crap will be able to move with me onto the next one. Anyways, guys, I'll try to link all of the products that I have as well as videos discussing these a little bit more in depth and giving more of an example as to why you would possibly use them. I'll put all that down below. Uh, like this video if you want to. Maybe hit that subscribe button because I do a bunch of random crap like this pretty consistently. Love you all. Deuces, kitties.